So now we have the ability to restart the game and play it over and over again, we're now ready to move on to the next feature within our end game view. And that is to display the current score our user got within the game they just played. So what we got already set up is our label. And by default, it's displaying the number 10 because that's what we chose to display within the interface builder. So how we need to do this is once the user plays the game, and then once it then triggers the action to switch to this end view when the game has finished, we need to get that current score, bring it with us as it switches to the end game view, and then display that in a label. And that is what's known as passing data between two views. So we need to get our first view, in this case is our game view, to kind of talk to our end view to pass the data over. Now how we do this is we need to create a variable within our end game view. So just after all these outlets here, I'm going to create a variable. So type in VAR, and I simply call it score data. And that's going to be linked to a string. I'm replacing an exclamation mark here because we're going to be um, transferring data over there. Now this variable is going to be used to store the information. And how it works is just before we switch to the end game view, we're going to tell this variable that this is the data we want it to handle. And by data, we mean the score from our user. So if our user gets the score of, let's say, 45, just before it switches and the game ends, we're going to tell this string to hold the information of 45. And then once this view loads up, we're then going to tell the actual score label, which we need to create, that it needs to display the number 45, thus being our user's score. So we're going to jump into our main storyboard, and we need to create an outlet for this label. So bring up our assistant editor. There we go. And I'll just space out here just after these previous outlets and drag and drop this new label in. And I'll call it our score label. There we go. Connect that up. Let's give it that space there. We don't need it. And then go back to our standard editor and then jump in to our end view controller dot swift again. So we've got our variable, we've got our label all now created. Perfect. So let's jump into our game view controller dot swift. And what we want to focus on is just where it switches to our end game view, which is this function down below. So give us the ability to push the data over. We need to adjust how this function simply works. Now, the great thing for us is we created a constant here of our let of our VC short for view controller, and that equals our storyboard file of main, which is linked to our end view controller, which is perfect for us. Meaning, if I space this out now, if I reference VC, the constant let that we created just up above, and then do dot, we're then able to reference any of the objects within that view. So I can add in now our score data. So our score data on that view is simply going to equal our score label dot text in this view. So our score label dot text here is going to be displaying the current score from our user. And when we go to switch view, because we got this already set up, which is perfect for us, our VC short for view controller links to that class. And because it does, when we call upon, again, that variable, we can then reference any, again, variable outlet uh, with inside of that view. And we're going to equal that variable there to whatever is being displayed within our score label. So as it goes for the process of switching to the view, when this new view loads up, our end game view controller, our score data already equals the information of our user's score. All it's then left for us to do, as soon as the view loads up, we're then going to simply get our score label dot text to then simply equal our score data. As simple as that. Now, don't get confused with the fact that we've called both labels and both views score label. Again, if we go back to our game view here, the score label that it equals and this view is the one that's um, currently displaying the score as our user increases. And in our end, end game view, the score label is what's displayed at the very top of our end game view. 
So with that simple process there, we'll now go to build and run and we'll test it out. So as we start to go play the game, again, it will do our countdown and then it gives us the ability to get as much score as we could possibly want. So let's go for something quite high. Let's go for, I don't know, let's see how we can go. So we got to 49 and as it switches over, it now displays 49 within our end view. How cool is that? We've now switched the data all the way over to our end view and now displaying it to our user that their final score was 49. So again, back within our end game view, what that does in our home view, if I restart the game, when the function, when the game has ended and it then sets up the function to switch uh, to our end view, it's getting our VC, which is linked to our end game view, and our variable and equaling that to our score label of 16 as you can see transfers that over so now our score data equals it and then when the view loads up we make our score label equal score data which is housing that information and we display it to our user to tell them this was your final score how cool is that which now leads us on to the next part of an application is when we go to restart our high score still displays zero. So in the next coming lectures, we're gonna be doing it in two parts, is we're gonna learn about how we can save the score and display it within our high score. And then we're gonna learn about how we can make sure that every time we save and load the score, that we only load in the highest score that we've ever achieved within our application.